Welcome to Wedding Day Podcast with your hosts, Sonia Babich, CEO of Iron Diamond Media, a leading wedding resource featuring seven localized wedding brands across the country, and Dan Riggs, photography and videography expert and founder of Summit Hill Studios. Come along as they travel from state to state to connect with the most creative and well-respected professionals in the wedding industry. Every episode will arm you with the hottest new trends, wedding day tips and details, and they'll show you all the joys of planning your perfect wedding day. Hi, I'm Jenna Cully, owner of Linden Effects Minneapolis. I bet I can guess the third thing you did after getting engaged. Number one, you called family and friends to share the good news. Number two, you started a Pinterest board. Number three, you realize that you have no idea how to bring that Pinterest board to life. That's where we come in. Let the design experts at Linden Effects take your ideas and bring them into reality. We have everything, including floor length linens, charger plates, table settings, centerpieces, candles, pretty chairs, lounge furniture sets, and more to make your event picture perfect. Go to our website at linenoffects.com to schedule your appointment today. That's linenoffects.com and see your Pinterest board come to life. Hi everybody, Sonia Babbage here with Wedding Day Podcast. Today I'm with Brooke Bicey, our publisher of Minnesota Bride and Nebraska Wedding Day. And our guest today is one of my close friends, um, Christy Poplar, um, owner and founder of Studio C Floral. And I am thrilled to have you here today. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you very much for having me. This is so fun. Uh, it's so fun. Well, as you know, we love flowers in our company and yep. yes. personally. <laughs> yes, 100%. Um, but I want to just, of course, dive into your background because you've had 30 years of experience before you started Studio yes. C Floral? I'm only admitting to 30. It's actually a little more. <laughs> but at some point, it like turns you into dinosaur. So I'm like 30-ish. So, so, so yeah. how did you start your journey? Um, so my grandparents had a nursery in Blaine, Minnesota for oh. years. So I grew up potting plants and you know all of that. I worked in a greenhouse, a couple of them. Um, I worked in flower shops in many different capacities and um, ended in wholesale, um, wholesale flowers. So I did all of the design and production for a local wholesaler. Okay, so cool. from so when you say wholesaler, what does that mean? Um, so we as florists go to get kind of like a Costco, but for flowers. So we buy everything wholesale to resell it. And you were their point of contact, right? Um, so sense? I sort of like worked in the background a little. Um, we helped flower shops that had big events. Oh. Um, they would give us their event work and we would crank out 600 centerpieces if they needed that or whatever. So my team were all design. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah, it was really fun. And then uh, from there, I got a lot of wonderful opportunities to go over to Asia. Um, do product development. Um, so cool. I got to develop a lot of um, containers, container lines, flower lines um, for different distributors that maybe you see at like Target or Pottery Barn or um, something like that. So we developed those and then they were sold to distributed and sold to consumers. So, so what, how did cool. you get the itch to say, I want to start my own company, my own uh, business? Um, so a funny story, I was very burned out um, at the job that I was at. And, um, you know, I was complaining to my husband about it. And he was like, you know, maybe you're just not really a good employee. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like rude why would you say that who says that and he was like no 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 really I, I I mean maybe you should be the boss maybe you shouldn't be an employee maybe you should like try being the boss and That's I was amazing. like okay mm. and so we started really small and have just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and um, now we have um, a giant team of it's not that big but I mean it's a biggish team yeah. of people that help and we do stuff all over the place and this was so, nine wow. years ago this was nine years ago yep wow yeah, yeah. so it's we been have a, a 10 year anniversary coming up I know I know Ooh. we have a huge party uh, with a lot of flowers yes yes exactly <laughs> exactly I feel like maybe not so I just want to show up yeah or maybe <laughs> maybe no flowers because that's just a, yeah I bet you learned so much at the wholesaler though about like what's like season flower, what yes, what flowers are good at what seasons and all that kind of stuff. Yes, I love this actually because 
brides will come in and they're like, I want peonies, but it's November. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> Which is actually an okay time for peonies. Is Just, it? It is. Oh, see? It is. So a bad the, example. <laughs> uh, I know, I know, I know. But like August is bad. Um, but no, that's, that is so, it was so helpful to just learn like seasonality, where everything is coming from. Um, you know, peonies, for example, can be local and then that season ends and they come out of Alaska and then they're out of Chile and then they come out of Israel and then they get back to, you know, or Holland or whatever. Yeah, so yeah. most things people always ask, you know, oh, can I have these? Are they in season? And I'm like, pretty much everything's in season all the time. Yeah, um, just so sometimes. You have to source it right. Yeah, yeah, you have to source it right. And sometimes things are way prettier. Um, like this time of year, dahlias are coming into yes. season and they yes. really don't ship well. And so, mm -hmm. you know, to get them from other places in the world is so just not So you're telling ideal. me you don't grow this in your backyard. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm killing a cactus at my house. <laughs> it's big and beautiful and it's sad and I, I cannot grow flowers or plants. No, so. that's a, I like, think that's kind of the lane. mindset of couples. I think that you have all this inventory at your fingertips, but no, you have to order as every, in. You have to order things in. Every single stem. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. No, <laughs> there are so many wonderful florists that do yeah. and that's fantastic. It is pretty cool who do. I, I'm, I kill flowers at my own house. I'm actively killing a cactus. <laughs> Somehow, um, I cannot grow them, green plants, blooming plants, flowers, yeah. any of it. Um, and I'm just kind of like, stay in your lane. This is what I know really well. Yeah. And I do someone else who's very good at all of that can grow all the flowers. And that's wonderful. So your flowers are shipped, right? To you, you put your sometimes, orders in. Sometimes, yes. So we have the capability, you know, now with the internet, it's not that new, but um, that we can order flowers from everywhere in the world. Um, so there is a huge flower market in Holland um, and it's an auction actually, which is crazy, like the big stock market thing. And you can go online and bid on flowers cool. and they will arrive, you know, hours later or however. Yeah. Um, there's also uh, South America is a huge um, place that grows everything and they kind of have the perfect climate. So there's a lot of flowers, roses particularly, that come from South America. Oh, um, interesting. Yeah, yeah, most roses, um, the bulk of roses are sold or come from South America. So, cool. um, of course, with our brands, we love flowers. Yes. Right, and flowers have, I honestly, I feel I have taken off because more the merrier. Yes. Like we're going from the centerpieces, bouquets, but now we have installations. Yes. Mm. It's not a wedding without an installation. It's not a wedding without <laughs> a wow factor. And that's right. a, lo a lot of times is the wow factor. It is. It is. So let's break down an installation like, and what's the time that goes into an installation and all the nitty yeah. gritty, right? Yeah. It's a lot of nitty gritty. It's a lot of um, engineering actually which yeah. i super love i geek out on like how how we can make something happen um so it's it oh, wow. kind of all depends on the space that it's going in does it need to hang do we need to bring in a lift will the floor support a lift um mm -hmm. do we you know what sort of cable do we hang it from um, are there hooks or not? Are hooks? there hooks? Is there something that we can fasten to the weight of what it's going to be? What kind of structure, you know, is going to hold all this stuff? And then also there's always the aspect of the water source. Mm. Um, so, you know, mm. some flowers can last a little while out of water. A lot of them don't. And so that's always a, a consideration too. I love that you too. brought that up because sometimes the the florists and designers want to put in the installation the day before, yeah. but it may not be the right flowers with the vision that they want to have right, on, right. for their wedding day. Yeah, so it has to, I mean, a lot of that comes down to your team mm -hmm. as well. Um, how much time do you have to get this piece done in the Into venue? Into the venue. Right, you know, sometimes you can't get in until noon. Um, and so, you know, if the wedding's at And you're four, being messy while you're doing this. It's very messy. It's very <laughs> messy. It makes me crazy, but it's a disaster before it's pretty. Um, so there's just, there's a lot of time. There's a lot of like forethought. Um, there's a lot of like crazy considerations. And then also, I mean, they're expensive. So yeah. that's another part of it that, you know, is sort of like, 
if this is going to be your moment, let's make this your moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then maybe we keep it simple everywhere else or, yeah. you know, let's do the whole ceiling. I'm not. If it's going to be a statement, let's make it a statement. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Go big. So the synergy between like rental pieces and the floor, like the flowers. So like yep. if someone rents an arbor or like, do you have the arbors or like we the do. rental items and the flowers, how do those yep. like come together? So we do have a ton of pieces. There's this yep. amazing welder in um, my building that my studio's in, cool. and he's made so many incredible pieces for us. Because oh, you can buy all these things, you know, yeah, at yeah. random places, but, you know, after we've done an arbor, you know, put all the flowers on an arbor several times, for example, we're like, you know, this just doesn't really work how we want it to work. Mm -hmm. So I've had a ton of pieces built just for us. Um, that we can use, reuse, and we just rent those to our couples. We have arbors and hoopas and um, yep. tons of stuff. I love that. You've seen a lot, like trends come and go. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about some of the like wildest things you've seen or some stories. Uh, um, <laughs> trends, I, you know, there's always going to be trend like, you know, baby's breath was really big. Yes, it was. And <laughs> I am old enough that, I mean, I've seen it like come and go several times already. And, and again, and you can use it. It's still in moments. It all yes, depends on the yes. environment and the backdrop. Totally, totally. But I am seeing now more as a trend, people really like embracing and leaning into being really unique and really individual, which is great for me because mm -hmm. I don't want to do the same thing over and over. Mm -hmm. um, it's boring and it doesn't say anything about that couple. And I want to be able to mm -hmm. tell their story somehow and incorporate like meaningful things through, you know, what we do. We did a, um, a long time ago, a wedding for beekeepers. Oh, and cool. I know, and we found like all these beehives and they were like tucked into their centerpieces and fun. it was so fun and different and kind of kooky. And we're like, let's do that. So I really love to lean into, you know, who the couple is and, um, you know, try to tell their story. Mm -hmm. And so trends are, are trends, but you know, let's do something that's really, yeah. really meaningful. I no, love I love, I, I love that with the flowers do tell a story but also I feel like as guests there's common things that they walk away from a wedding yeah and what they notice yeah food always flowers always mm -hmm. hopefully yeah <laughs> and honestly um the dance party yes um, food flowers. I feel like those are like yes those three totally. that really stand out I know everything is important it all yes. comes together but again when guests come it's not like they're educated on who does what right, right for sure but the common things that they walk away is like oh that was really good food or did you see those flowers? Right. Flowers just help elevate that love story for the day. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Feel. Absolutely. It totally does. So let's break down like timeline when they mm. contact you. Like, how does that look? Because again, like we talked about, they feel like the flowers are in their in your back pocket, right? You can whip yes. them out, but you, but you can't. So what is a realistic first meeting goal like look like and how does it unravel to the wedding day? Yeah, so ideally six months to a year in advance. Um, a year is pretty perfect. I, um, I support a year too. Yeah, yeah. If you have um, an ideal florist, get, her, it, get it locked in. Yes, for sure. Okay. Um, everybody, there's always like big weekends. Labor Day weekend, for example, is always a yep. huge weekend. So, really? Yes, it's crazy. Well, I so, always would say book that weekend because you have a longer honeymoon or a longer well, that too. anniversary weekend <laughs> that in too. the future. But anyways, yeah. <laughs> We're happy know. to work that weekend because we get Monday off, so it's great. Yes. Uh, um, so ideally a year out just to make sure that we're available. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like people just book up really fast anymore. Yep. And so, um, you know, if we can get the day locked in, do that first and then let's figure out all the details later. Yep, right. um, so at our initial meeting, we just want to talk about like general colors, who's the planner, where, what's the venue, what's your general budget, what's kind of the overall feel, the vibe that you want your guests to experience when they walk in. And Do you like the planner to come to that meeting? Yes. Or the I designer? Love that. Yeah, I love that because, um, you know, 
a lot of times they're working with the planner first anyways and yeah. so the planner will have like a pretty solid idea if it's like a deck or something that we can sort of look at and get ideas from and at least see their inspiration mm -hmm. um, a lot of times that's a, it's a big flowers are a lot of logistics it's so much yeah. logistics yeah, yeah because um if you're having that more flowers th there's a lot of logistics that go into it instead of like oh it's just a bouquets it's really a drop and yeah. see you later right right, right. So. so we do um we really specialize in full service and so full service means our team is there all day to style everything, to light the candles, to make sure all the Ooh. the linens are... Candles linens. take time, everybody. It takes they a long do. time to light candles, really especially do. when you do a ton of them. Yes. Um, yep. But, you know, we'll, we'll make sure that, you know, we don't mess up any of the linens. And, you know, my team are very, very particular, which I Mm -hmm. And, you know, it takes a long time to Couple make sure there's no, too. yeah, but mm -hmm. you know, we don't want any fingerprints on the glass or wonky looking candles. Mm -hmm. It's always the photographer will like take this beautiful picture of the couple and I'll get it back and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm right off to the sides like a candle that's like sideways and I'm like, okay, this why right didn't here. we Christy, see that? Yeah. It's Christy like, it queen makes me of crazy. Details. It makes me crazy. Yes, you are so, the queen of details. All but those old but details. all of that makes a difference. Totally. right or you know you get a close-up shot of something really pretty and there's like big smudges on the glass it's yep, so yep. yeah so day of there's a ton of just like logistics and we're yep. polishing and you know smoothing and making chair, sure chairs are straight and all of that stuff but Love that. um on just the planning of it we order flowers about a month ahead of time and oh. um you know just to make sure we have all the basics and then um, the week of, we can go to our flower markets, especially in the summer. Oh mm. my gosh, the locally mm. grown flowers are bonkers, like bonkers. It's so fun. It's like kid in a candy store and you mm. can walk in and just like find all the most incredible, beautiful things. And so, you know, we have all of our basics, you know, your pink roses or, or whatever, yeah. but then to find, you know, beautiful locally grown dahlias or just any of these like things and I that's love sort that of the magical capture that part. Um, it's okay to let go a little bit and trust your wedding yes. professionals to yes. pop in some of these twists that you like well that flower wasn't in the design but right it, honestly if they put it in there they know it's going to be even grander yes mm -hmm. you know and we tell our couples that too like give me a list of the flowers that you don't like. Yeah. You know, because most mm -hmm. people are like, flowers are pretty, we love flowers, do whatever. Um, but we really stay away from, like there's gonna be six roses and two dahlias and three pieces of blah, 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 because it just like, I don't know, kind It's of, not organic. It's not, it, yeah, it's not organic. And so, you know, we really talk to our clients about the colors, the feel, the size, the texture, you know, that type of thing over specific flowers. And that really gives us the opportunity to find all these little magical bits that we can put in at the end, which I love. I remember you one telling, once told me one of the biggest things that, you know, you're not worried about, but on a wedding day is when you hand the bouquet to the bride. Yes, right? yes. Oh, that's so a big moment. It is, and yeah. so you've been like, for us, like we've been working all week long, we've been processing flowers and arranging everything and like trying to make everything perfect. And the bride at that point hasn't seen the full room reveal or any of that yet. And so like giving her the bride is the first like little sneak peek moment. And people just really like connect with that. And it, it just kind of makes, it's kind of like, okay, we're good. The rest of the day is going to be great because she's super happy in this moment. Oh, so I love I, that. I agree with that because it's almost like a, a new, like you picture yourself wearing the dress. Yes. You're, you picture when you're holding the bouquet. Yes. yes. And they're like, it's the full look. Yes. It's complete. So yes. that's when you breathe on the wedding day. It is. It's when we breathe. <laughs> yep. Because that. she's. we're like, okay, everybody's good. Let's roll. Let's do the rest. We're going to rock this out. So yeah, that. it's always like whew, a little sigh of relief. Not that we're worried about them not liking it, but just like it just, mm -hmm. I don't know. It just kind of gives you this little like energetic. Yes, everybody's happy. Let's go. So you recently shared that you experienced an event. 
right? And it yes. was post the C word COVID. <laughs> Thank you. So, and you changed yes. your world with this or business, yes. right? Yes. And so, you know, that's like a couple of years behind us now. Thank goodness. And, um, but ever since then, so during the C word, um, I think every one of us really felt like some degree of hopelessness, maybe, or right. unimportant, not unimportance, but like I remember talking to my sisters and I'm like, I'm not a doctor or a frontline worker. And you know, if everything just goes to hell and we're on a commune somewhere, I'm like, what am I gonna do? It just like making things look pretty is not yeah. important in the scheme of things. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And, and my sisters are like, no, 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 art is important. Mm -hmm. The arts are important, beauty is important. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Yes, but you know, whatever. And um, so fast forward a couple of years, we still kind of talk about this and they're, they're still like, you don't get it. And I'm like, not really. And so we- um, I know her sisters. Oh, well, one of us. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're all, <laughs> if you know two of us, you yes. know the rest of us yes. too. Um, and so we go to a concert. Um, I don't know if you know this, I was a cellist. Um, a really no. long time ago. Yeah. I know. Uh, uh, no athletes, at least not in my family. Um, <laughs> we were all music people. Like my mom wanted us to be the Von Trapps, and so everyone played an <laughs> instrument. It was horrible at the time. It's kind of cute now. Anyway, and so uh, my sisters and I took my mom to see um, this performance of the Four Seasons. And um, it was just this beautiful quartet that was playing it. The room's pitch dark. And you know, we're just sitting there, whatever, and the first notes of the song came on. I lost my mind, like oh. blubbering, bawling, not like a beautiful dramatic tear. It was like, you know, bad. And I was like, what is happening? Yeah. And I'm not a crier. Like, I feel things, but the feelings don't come out of my eyes. And all of a sudden, you know, I'm like, what is happening? And afterwards, I was kind of like, oh, sorry, guys. Oh, that kind of like, yeah. and my sisters looked at me and they're like, made you feel something, didn't uh -huh. it? It's kind of important. Yeah. And I was like, whoa. And it just, it like, it really took me back. And I was like, okay, I totally get it. I totally I get that. it. And it really changed um, my viewpoint. It really gave me a different perspective and a different respect for um, what we do, not to Artistry. compare myself to some yeah. crazy artist, clearly not. However, just the, you know, how people see things is different from how I see things. Mm -hmm. And art makes you feel things mm -hmm. and makes you, mm -hmm. you know, it tells stories and it gives people feelings and emotions and that's so important. It brings the energy into the room too. Yeah. That you want to yeah. communicate. Yep. No, you are an artist. Well, exactly. yes. thank you. That, but you know what I'm I saying? Mean, it's not just like, going to say those exact words, a genuine thing. Thank you. It's art what you do. It is. It's, it's, it's meaningful. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, it's very meaningful and that, and to see the, the, the emotion that people get when you hand someone their bouquet mm -hmm. or, you know, when you show up with flowers at a funeral or for a new baby or something like, it really evokes feelings and emotions in people. And, you know, it's like, it doesn't suck. It's not a bad job. Like no, no one is ever unhappy and to see honestly, you. And honestly, a lot of wedding professionals are artists besides yes. florists. Very, absolutely. Because they see the vision. And that is, a, that is a talent and an artistry in itself to see absolutely. the vision come to life and communicate it. And, and the couple's trusting that they yes. see the vision that they want to have. Yes. I always say that's why my true love story, I feel like, is wedding professionals. Because I'm no ounce of creatively I'm not creatively wired at all but I that's not true well I'm Everyone, so drawn to people who are gen like if you can balance that, a checkbook you're very creative I don't, I don't even know if I can do <laughs> that. if you can do your taxes you're really you creative like spend the money what are we <laughs> yeah. talking about here okay. that's fair that's fair no but I love it but it is. 
really special to yeah be able to do what you do yes i think it is too and it's so wonderful to be able to you know get to know other wedding professionals i really think that don't you feel like it helps so much like you were um talking about our friend rhoda and yeah. how you're so comfortable you can just walk into her shop and she knows exactly what you want you know exactly you know <laughs> what i mean it's i love that on a wedding day being able to walk in and be like Dan's here, it's gonna be a party, I yes, know. you know? I will do a shout out, everybody should be buddies with their florist. You should find your florist yes. that's in your hometown or get to know each other. So when you call, you're like, hey, I have company coming over, putting this on the, I need a centerpiece for yep. this. Um, yep. They just know. Yeah. You need yeah. to be buddies with your florist. You need a buddy florist. Totally, again, totally. Flowers bring a new element into the space. Yes, I yep. agree. For I a agree. small, large, anything. You need a lawyer, a plumber, <laughs> a mechanic, <laughs> and a florist. Yes. Then you're set. <laughs> totally, <Amen>. totally. <laughs> That's so true. Well, it's been so awesome for you to yes, sit with son. us today. Thank you so much. I feel like we could talk forever. <laughs> I Same. know. I was like, Same. I don't want time to be done, yeah. but it's I know. Our time. I'm a chatty. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much but for having me. But seriously, thank was you very for sharing fun. your talents with Minnesota couples. You are it's just a pleasure. gift to all of us and just also thank a you. great human being as well. Thank you. I so. feel the same so. very much. Well, thanks everybody for tuning into Wedding Day Podcast. We'll see you next time. See you, bye. <laughs>